All righty, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Hajim Zero here, back with another quick movie review. This one's kind of one of my favorites, uh, and it's also a cult classic. And, you know, next to Friday, Menace to Society, and all those so-called urban hood movies, or whatever you want to call it. Um, this one's House Party, uh, directed by Ronald um, Hudderlin. And forgive me if I'm mispronouncing his name, even though... A lot of people are going to slew me in the comments probably when they eventually see this. Um, also, fun fact about this guy, he was the one that added a little bit of the mythos to, to Black Panther, the Marvel superhero. A lot of the elements had made it into the the recent movie. Um, next to the, the recent creator um, or the recent writer, the, the Taj Kodas dude who also wrote it. But this movie stars um, Kid and Play... Uh, um Christopher Kid Reed and um I'm drawing a blank on the dude the real guy's name whose name is Play. I want to say Christopher Martin. Yeah. Yeah, I think it is Christopher Martin. And uh Tisha Campbell's in this, um Full Force, the the rap group Lauren um uh Martin Lawrence, John Witherspoon, AJ Johnson, um can't remember her name, but she's um on Idlewild and um or Inkwell, I think. Well, well, Lawrence Tate. But her next uh her other known movie, which I'm also going to re review much later on, um she was on Baby Boy. She was Jody's mom. She plays Shireen. Um, ironically, she does return in the third movie, but I don't think it's I don't know if it's the same character or same actor or if she was a throwaway. But um, it's pretty much about you know um. Kid and uh, play are, are pretty much, you know, good friends um, in high school as well as, you know, real life. And um, they uh, they just decide to throw, you know, a house party, you know. It's just pretty much high school popularity and then being a jock. Again, I can relate to it because I went to a house party when I was a senior, you know. Um, when we had graduated, it was a very, not really intense, but memorable experience. <laughs> Um, pretty much that's not the only dynamic, uh, the other dynamic, I, the other two dynamics of the movie I did like was, um, his relationship with his father who was played by, uh, damn, Robin Harris, they got it, yeah, <laughs> depicted by Robin Harris and his relationship a little bit with Tisha Campbell. Um, of course it's the nineties, so it has a lot of subject matter that were going on. Um, of course, you know, everybody partying, having a good time, you know, in the early nineties, uh, it was pretty much good music just like this. It was, and it's labeled a cult classic because right after this, you had more of the hardcore stuff coming out, especially with movies like Friday, NWA and all that. And even off behind the scenes with Kid and Play with their popularity in New York, um, you know, the good thing about them is that they were out having a good time. They weren't stirring up no beef. You know, NWA was pretty much already out at that point, but of course, all the craziness didn't happen until like around like the, you know, like uh, 92 and, and three and all that. You know, this movie came out in 1990, right at the end of the 80s and the beginning of the 90s. So, you know, even though they were a little bit more, well, I would say play was, he wasn't, um best way I could describe it. He's like Bobby Brown's little brother, you know, He minus the whole crack and coke. You know, he had his moments of, of sexual endos and, and singing about things he liked. But at the same time, he wasn't rapping about, you know, killing and, and dope dealing and all that. He just rapping about basic things. Pretty much what uh, Fresh Prince and, um, and Jazzy Jeff will, will, will rap about. And it sucks because with his credibility, he definitely had to do something else. To boost notoriety versus just doing music, you know, because people didn't, you know, as soon as NWA came out, everybody wanted to be a hardcore gangster and, and they wanted that hard shit. They didn't want the whole light tone stuff. But me personally, I believe it's there. It's a nice balance. You know, I like Kid and Play as just as much as I like Tupac and NWA, as hardcore as they may be. It's a nice balance of, of who they are. And, um, you know, um, that's another good fun fact now that, that I just thought about it. And a friend, a mutual friend of mine had challenged me on it saying that uh, they never approach, approach Fresh Prince and Jazzy Jeff 
to do this movie because they already had notoriety before Fresh Prince. So this would have boosted them. But I couldn't really remember why they decided to go with Kid and Play. I'm assuming to give them a chance or they just passed on it. But regardless, both of them got their come up. This is on, on the Fresh Prince. So, you know, um, you know, and that took a whole other life on its own. But um, this movie had a lot of remnants of... Uh, Especially my past growing up in the 90s, especially with Robin Harris. You know, he fortunately did pass away like nine days after this movie came out. And it was so sad because I think he did like two or three movies at the same time. And he was a hardworking dude. I wish he was alive, you know, you know, today. This movie and um, Harlem Nights were, were my favorites. Even though I don't think he had that many scenes in Harlem Nights. But what really stood out was, you know, he was trying to teach his son, you know, as much more to life than, you know, part didn't have a good time all the time. And don't get me wrong, I was kind of the same way. I was a little bit different. You know, I wasn't with the music and all that. But of course, I I was more, you know, the thing is with me personally, um, what happened with me was I couldn't wait to get out of school, you know, because uh, right around middle school, it was pure hell. And then when I got to freshman um, year, I thought it was going to be the same thing. And for that whole year, I remember saying to myself, oh, this is going to be a fucked up year, this, that, and the other, you know, and it really wasn't that bad compared to middle school. So once sophomore year happened for me, um, I pretty much uh, got more into a social limelight and then I never wanted it to end. And even when I got to college, I kind of didn't and, and I kind of got punished for it just a tad bit when I got into college. So the good thing is that stuff needs to stay in the past nine times out of 10. It's nice to reminisce on it, but you know, it would never be the same again. I know another person was talking about how good life was in the early 2000s for him. And it was just the entertainment. It really wasn't much of the interaction. It, well, I say that back, it was the interaction, but some of the stuff you can't do anymore because you're not, you're not a child anymore. So um, that's pretty much how I, that whole thing of what I just said is what Robin Harris is pretty much saying to to kid's character and you know he was pretty much telling him to be responsible and the good thing is that later in the movie he is responsible you know one of the things that stood out to me the most is when he was with uh Tisha Campbell and they were about to um make love or whatnot and you know he um he uh first of all the condom was messed up and then he was asking about birth control and you know, he was like, I don't know why I'm even asking about birth, about birth control. Most guys wouldn't even care. And then, you know, it's little small things that, that, that I took to notice because I'm pretty much the same way. Even though he got the hook up with his chick, but his best friend play didn't in the movie. He got teased the entire time. And it just goes, it was kind of weird to me because I was like, if every chick wants you, why are you tripping over this one girl? That's for number one. And it just goes to show you a little bit you know, not just with the black community, but every other kind of culture around that most people don't appreciate other people. They only see them as trophies. You know, they look good or whatnot on your arm and you may have fucked them. But after that, that's pretty much it. And it sucks that we live in that kind of society, you know, today. And, you know, don't get me wrong. Having sex is fun and all. But yeah, you can still have sex with someone and still feel alone right after you you guys finish in the room. And I heard another YouTuber say the same thing, and I completely agree with him. You know, um, that's why, you know, even I'm saying to a lot of people, you know, a lot of kids, you know, save sex, you know, for, for marriage, you know. And discredit to another, um, what one YouTuber said, and, and they were making fun of this this guy. Well, not really. You, well, YouTuber criticizing somebody else. The whole Katy Perry thing, how he wanted his first time to be special and all that. It's kind of messed up how, um, I think it was on the Young Turks that Shank had pretty much mocked him for it. And I was like, that's what needs to be happening because it may not be special, but at the same time, yeah, if it was flipped the other way around, you know, of course, if it was a girl, um, being taken advantage of of the dude, of course, everybody gonna be flocking her, saying that she's all right. But as soon as it happened to a guy, how he cares that much about it, all of a sudden he's labeled as a punk or he's gay or you know is what um the dude on um what Shank was saying on the Young Turks that this shit's really not that special for the way he's propping up to be. And I was like, that's kind of messed up because you know I don't think the young man was that naive, but he was not that stupid to give it up either but it was just a kiss it wasn't uh having sex or whatnot um but the good thing you know um that's what i liked about 
most of all, Kid's character, and I could relate to him a lot, especially in the second movie. And, um, you know, it just blows that it's not that many people around, it, you know, like that anymore. But, you know, sex sells, you know, um, it just sucks that it's, it's being pushed a little bit more on children now, which is kind of true. I'm not going to lie. You know, um, you could debate about me on that if you want to, you know, um, but... You know, this movie was was a really, really good time. It's, um, ironically, if you're having a nice, decent house party and TV's on, you know, you could pop this in, you know, <laughs> ironically, watching the house party while being at a house party, but I highly doubt that happening if the music's blasting. But, um, who else was in there? Um, can't remember this dude's name, but he played, um, Chill in the movie, and I, I just found out. Oh, I think his name is, excuse me, I think his name is Jason Mitchell. And ironically, I found out that he's on Fear the Walking Dead. The sad thing is that he got into a car accident and he can't walk anymore. But um, I seen him in this and he looks like one of my cousins from the early 90s. So, you know, um, he's in this one and he was in the second one. Um, I think his name is Jason Mitchell, but uh, he does a lot of movies with, with Martin. He was on a show at one point. He was even in, um, was it Black Knight? Um, but, you know, the... The thing that really I stood that stood out to me the most was really the relationship with um with kid and and his father, you know. And um because you know, it was really setting up indirectly for the for the next movie, even though I don't think they they even planned it. But um that's pretty much all I have to say. Um again, we could talk about this in the comment box. Um and um I will talk to you guys later. Peace.